you are going to learn how to read structured drawings and specifically the lift shaft wall for this particular video. Let's first clearly understand what the lift shaft wall means. So, this is a lift shaft wall. It's a concrete wall constructed from the foundation to the top of the building meant to transfer lateral forces from the elevator to the foundation. The elevator will be moving inside here from up to down. It has an entrance slash exit on every floor. For example, people enter the elevator from the ground floor here, then move to the first floor, then to the second floor among other floors, then come back to the ground floor at the bottom. The process continues. The forces exerted on the elevators are heavy and need to be anchored securely to the building structure. So this lift shaft wall transfers the lateral forces exerted by the elevator to the foundation. Let's first clearly understand how to set out for the lift shaft wall. Basically, setting out for the lift shaft wall is quite simple and easy to understand. The concept is that let's take this rectangular box as our wall. Therefore, we shall have steel bars along here and also along here all around inside for front one and front two. This is front one steel bars and this is front two steel bars. These yellow bars are the horizontal steel bars aligned here and these ones dotted are the vertical steel bars aligned here. We also have to fix corner bars at every corner like this and that's how we make that pattern from the foundation of the building to the top of the building. According to the drawing, it details that we are supposed to excavate 1.7 meters below the ground floor level. This is 50 millimeters thick concrete blinding, 50 millimeters spacer blocks or concrete covers both in the sides and at the bottom. This is 450 millimeters reinforced concrete base and this is 1 meter 250 millimeters to reach the structure slab level of the ground floor. The drawing is always like this, but according to personal experience, this lift will always hit this base of ours here due to the high force that it comes with from above, which will affect the strength of this base negatively. So what we usually do, we cast extra mass concrete of 100mm thick on top of this base to protect it from the heavy force that the elevator comes with from above. Therefore, in actual sense, we shall excavate extra 100mm deeper than the actual depth on the drawing. So this will be 1.75 5 meters plus 100 millimeters to make it 1.85 meters therefore our pit is 1.85 meters we do concrete blinding of 50 millimeters spacer blocks of 50 millimeters reinforced concrete base of 450 millimeters mass concrete to protect the base of 100 millimeters then 1.25 meters up to the structure slab level of the ground floor making the total here as 1.85 meters the drawing details that we shall have H16 vertical bars. H16 is the bar thickness, therefore our steel bars will be of thickness 16 millimeters for the first side here and then the second side here, sitting on bottom bars in an L format with front one bars facing the left direction and front two bars facing the right direction. Similarly on ground, these are H16 steel bars, front one steel bars facing the left direction and front two bars facing the right direction. The thickness of the lift shaft wall is 250 millimeters according to the drawing and here on ground, this is 250 millimeters. We use steel bars of H12, code 17, hair 18, all at a spacing of 150 millimeters. These are steel bars of 12 mm thickness with spacing as 150 mm. We raise these starter bars up to a height corresponding to the height of the rest of the columns. Therefore, we raise the lift shaft wall starter bars to exceed 770 mm above each structure slab level. As you can see from these columns, they are exceeding 770 mm above each structure slab level. So this one will come like this up to 770 millimeters above the slab. At the position where the entrance will be, steel bars do not exceed the slab, just like here. The rest of the perimeter will be having steel bars exceeding 770 millimeters above the slab, but at the entrance here, we cut the steel bars to level up with the rest of the slab. Fix U bars at the entrance of the door where people will be entering from. For example, let's assume this is a door entrance. Fix U bars at the bottom, in the sides, and at the top of the door entrance. These U bars are of this shape and are fixed like this for the bottom. Do the same for the sides and above the door entrance. When setting out for the lift shaft wall at the bottom, we use this timber piece to make a kicker for the lift shaft wall. It's a rectangular piece of timber with a cross or plus in the middle also supported by these external pieces of timber to ensure that the wall thickness is 250 millimeters. 
After casting concrete for this kicker, we fix these horizontal steel bars and then do shattering or foam work. For our case, we normally use these metallic lead steel plates fixed with nuts and screws on particular points or holes, then welded with these RHS supports to ensure that the thickness of the lift shaft wall is untampered with, that is 250mm everywhere and also to ensure that these walls will be straight after the shattering. After the shattering, the wall will be looking like this from the bottom of the pit up to the last floor above. When fixing U bars, always consider the overlap correctly. The formula for the overlap is 50 times diameter, therefore the length of the U bars will be 50 times diameter. So this is 50 times 16 which gives us 800 millimeters. Therefore these U bars will be 800 millimeters here and also 800 millimeters. We treat U bars like an overlap. Similarly, when connecting these steel bars joining one level to another level, we overlap 800 millimeters below here. The next steel bar will also be 800 millimeters overlapping here. In summary, our next steel bars will be overlapping 800 millimeters with the existing steel bars. These H10 code for 150 millimeters spacing F1 bars are these ones moving like this from here up to here of this shape, whereas these H10 Code 6 150mm spacing F2 bars are these ones moving like this from here up to here also of this shape. These bars are in spaces or layers of 150mm and these H10 Code 5 150mm F1 corner bars are these ones of this shape put at every corner like this. So this is corner rebar 1, this is also another rebar at the corner, this one also and this one also. In summary, when building the lift shaft wall, the concept is as simple as this. We first raise these vertical steel bars, these ones of H16, then we follow this pattern for the horizontal bars. This is front 1, which is fixed like this. This is front 2, which is also fixed like this. We do the same for all the four sides of the rectangle. This is the northern side, which will also be fixed like this. Same for the eastern side with front 1 and front 2 and lastly we do the same for the western side. After fixing steel bars for the four sides, we fix these corner bars of this shape here at this corner, also here at this corner, also at this third corner here and this fourth corner here. The final product will be looking like this, as simple as that. That's the end of this video about how to read the structured drawings for the lift shaft wall. I hope you get something from it. Watch this next video about how to read the structured drawings for the retaining wall. Check it out.